and welcome to today's assembly which focuses on World AIDS Day. World AIDS Day takes place every year on the 1st of December. It takes place as a chance for people to raise awareness for issues around AIDS and HIV and remember those who lost their lives to it in the UK and around the world. But what is HIV? HIV is a virus that attacks the body's immune system. It stands for Human Immunodeficiency Virus. It is not the same as AIDS. AIDS stands for Acquired Immune Deficiency Syndrome and can develop after HIV when the immune system is damaged to such an extent that it can no longer fight off a range of infections it would normally cope with, something like pneumonia. So how many people are affected by this disease? Well, currently, globally, in the world, there are just short of 40 million people living with HIV. And in the UK, there are over 100,000 people living with the disease. But how do people get HIV? How is it passed on? Well, there are two main routes for uh, getting HIV in this country. Having sex without protection and sharing needles or injecting equipment with someone who is HIV positive. But there are also lots of myths about how people get HIV, and I want to make sure that we're clear on the ways in which it cannot be passed on. So kissing, hugging, or touching a person who is HIV positive will not pass on the disease. Sharing plates, cutlery, or using the same bathroom who is HIV positive will also not lead to HIV being passed on. Those are all perfectly safe. So what's the history of this disease? Well, AIDS was discovered in 1981 and World AIDS Day was first observed in 1988. Over the past 39 years, more than 35 million people have died from AIDS globally. This makes it the most deadly pandemic in recorded history. In the developing world, it is currently the fourth leading cause of death. While there are treatments to help with the symptoms of HIV or to reduce the likelihood of someone contracting it, there is currently no vaccine or cure. So how did we get to the point that we are today, where numbers of people with HIV are so much lower than they were in the 80s and 90s? Well, in the 1980s, thousands of people were dying from HIV in countries such as the US and UK. And many governments were slow to fund research into the disease and research into how to cure the disease or uh, reduce the symptoms. Some believe this is because it was most prevalent among minority communities, especially among gay men, and that homophobic prejudice meant that leaders did not feel like it was a priority to focus on helping those people. Organisations such as one called ACT UP in the US and the Terence Higgins Trust here in the UK were created to raise awareness and fight for medical research. Let's have a look at a couple of people that were involved in a lot of these fights. Larry Kramer was a US activist who fought hard for change. As part of ACT UP, the American organisation, he would hold peaceful protests such as the die-in you can see pictured on screen. In these protests, they would lie on the floor with fake gravestones uh, outside of important buildings to get the government to agree to speed up research uh, in approving drugs that would help fight the disease. At this time, when he was holding these protests in the 1980s, about 150 people were dying every month in the US. When AIDS was first discovered, doctors weren't certain how it was passed on, so those diagnosed with it were kept in isolation and people with visible symptoms were often shunned within society. There was a lot of fear around AIDS. And so they often have this famous slogan of ACT UP, silence equals death, in which they were saying the silence of the government and the government's decision not to put money into research and not to help these patients was leading to more and more deaths uh, and killing those that could perhaps have been saved with that research and that medical intervention. Uh, Betty McConey, uh, is a Zimbabwean activist who fought to change many of the myths around HIV in Zimbabwe and surrounding nations. She currently runs a charity called the Girl Child Network, which raises awareness around uh, treatment for AIDS, but also how those who uh, are living with AIDS are treated within her communities. Now, 
Another famous project that came out of the uh, AIDS epidemic in the 80s and 90s um, was the AIDS quilt. Because of the devastation of AIDS and the huge number of deaths, uh, the NAMES project created something called the AIDS Memorial Quilt. They started this in 1985 in the US, and each panel is made by a loved one or, uh, of someone who has died from HIV or AIDS and commemorates their life. It now has over 94,000 names and weighs more than 54 tonnes. Um, and there are bits that you can see uh, around the world um, as part of sort of an art project. So what's changed since the 1980s? Well, these days, being HIV positive is not the death sentence it was in the early 1980s. And many people live with HIV without it ever developing into AIDS. Although HIV cannot be cured, on the right medication, it can become undetectable, meaning it cannot be passed on from the HIV positive person. For example, an HIV positive woman on the right medication will not pass on HIV to any children she may have. This means there are now more people living and carrying on normal lives with HIV rather than dying from AIDS. However, those living with HIV are often stigmatized this means they're treated differently because of the disease. There are um, some research that has been done, and one in eight people currently living with HIV say that they've never told anyone other than uh, healthcare professionals because of fear of what, what others might say. One in three say they are worried that they would be treated differently by other patients if the patients in a hospital knew about their HIV status. One in five people found that they're incredibly lonely and isolated because of their HIV status. And one in 10 people with HIV had actually been denied or refused health treatment that they needed because of their HIV status. So there's still a lot of stigma and a lot of fear around it, even though much of that is unfounded. So what can you do? Well, one of the ways that we raise awareness is to wear the red rib ribbon. If you ever see me around school, you will see that I wear, one, I wear one on my lanyard. We can make sure that we challenge HIV stigma, that we don't let other people treat those who have HIV any differently, and that we ourselves make sure that we treat people with HIV with the same respect we would anyone else. If you have any questions about this or uh, anything further you would like to know, the following uh, websites are easy to find and will give you a lot more information. The Terence Higgins Trust, the National AIDS Trust and Youth Stop AIDS, all there to raise awareness and provide you with any information. Thank you for listening.